Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's upscale, we are going to start off with me showing you how to color your own crushed glass. Uh, I don't use a lot of crushed glass in big projects. I just use it in smaller stuff. So I don't ever need to purchase it in big quantities. And it's a lot cheaper to do it on your own and you can kind of customize the colors to whatever you need in the amount that you need. And if you're anything like me, I don't have the space for a bunch of different stuff that I rarely use. I've already got enough of that going on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is for this project that we're going to work on today is I want it to be a gray silvery color. So I'm going to get one container for the bulk, the main color, and I'm just going to pour a bunch of crushed glass in it. Then I'm going to get my second container. This is going to be for another color and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some alcohol ink and I am going to color it with the alcohol ink. You want to make sure you obviously shake it up really well. Just put some in there, mix it up really, really well. Be careful when you're mixing it though because those little glass shards do like to go flying and nobody wants to step on that or get it up their finger. And that's it. Then you just kind of spread it out, let it dry. I let mine dry overnight. It doesn't take nearly that long with alcohol ink. Um, the next color, what I want to do is I want to have three different shades of this gray going on. I want to have it for my shadows, you know, and my highlights. So I'm going to take that same silver color, add a few drops of black to it and make my shadow out of it. Now, See, I don't need nearly as much of this as I do the regular gray, so I can control how much I'm making of it. Then I'm going to take another container, and I'm going to put some of what I originally mixed in and add some pearl white to it to make my highlights. Now, I have also done this with pigment dyes, um, like the translucent ones, and it does work. Uh, the first time that I actually ever did it, I did it with that as opposed to alcohol inks because I didn't have the right colors in the alcohol ink to make the color that my client wanted. So I used pigment dyes. They work. It does um, color the glass. The only thing that I would say is if you're going to do it that way, give yourself more time for it to dry. The alcohol ink dries way, way, way faster than the actual pigment dye does. So you want to make sure that you're allowing that color. The only other thing is that there was some slight bleeding in some of them, not all of them. I mean, it wasn't enough that it like ruined the project or anything that I did. But just so you know, you know, 100% transparency, there was some slight bleeding in doing it that way. Now, whether it was the brand or the color or like I said, maybe it was just a lot. I don't know. Um. But yeah, so that is something to kind of pay attention to. I didn't have any of that at all when I did it with the alcohol ink, though. Anyway, so what I'm going to do with this picture frame is I took it apart. I took the glass out. I want to do a watering can flower vase out of this that's coming up. So I got some 3D fabric paint. Uh, and I just got that from the dollar store along with the picture frames and the majority of the flowers that I'm using. And I'm outlining something that I, just an image that I found on Google Images just to get the basic shape of this watering can that I want to use. I'm highlighting it with it. Kind of what I'm doing as I'm doing this, the reason I picked a puffy paint is I want that paint to kind of like make a dam because I will be using resin on this later on to keep it from flowing everywhere. I let that dry for a good 24 hours because you want to make sure that there is no moisture in it whatsoever for it to dry, right? And then what I'm going to do is I am still with this image under there so I can kind of see where the highlights and lowlights are on this particular can, I am now putting the glass into where, you know, I made the dam and the outline of the this watering can. This part, I'm not going to lie, took a long time to do because I wanted to make sure with the glasses being so many different sizes, I didn't want it up so high that I wasn't going to be able to cover it with resin because I don't want anyone, you know, to get cut on it. It is glass. 
and I don't want the resin to go up higher than the paint because I don't want it pouring out over on the edges of this. I want to keep it centralized to just this watering can. The reason that I'm not using the top part is because it's going to get covered anyway, so there's no point in doing it. Now, that being said, the 3D paint, when I painted it and I initially put it down, it looked puffy. It did run some and flatten out, whether it's because I used a dollar store brand or because that's just how they work, I don't know. I don't use puffy paint very often. I can't honestly tell you the last time I've used it, quite frankly. So this part right here, I just added a tiny bit of that silver alcohol ink just to color the resin a little bit for me putting it over top of the glass so that there's wherever there's any holes where maybe the glass isn't completely covering it's still going to have that color to it and then i'm just going to kind of drip it on we're not pouring it on we're just dripping it on and mixing up that glass in there so it all adheres to itself gets completely coated in the resin and then shifting it along to make sure that it's still in place and i don't have any going over the edges or any of that fun stuff and, you know, like I said, this, it does take a while to do because the glass likes to go flying. So you got to kind of work very, very carefully and slowly. But I just take a toothpick now and just kind of move it all around and cover it up. And I want to make sure, again, that I don't have a lot of protruding parts from this so that nobody gets hurt on it if they touch it. So back to the puffy paint. Now, there is paint, and I think it's by PBO, if I'm not mistaken, that they do like a liner paint. Nadia from Leodina Designs uses it a lot for the art that she does. That would be a better alternative, I think, probably than this, because that paint seems to stay a little better from what I've seen. I've not, I have it, but I haven't used it much, and I completely forgot that I had it while I was doing this. Otherwise, I would have used it, and it would have been better, because I actually have a silver that would have just been completely better than doing it in the black, but I couldn't find a black, a silver puffy paint. So yeah, there's that. But anyway, I think that the liner paint would probably be a lot better to use. It won't flatten out. It'll keep its height. You can go over it a second time and make it higher if you so choose to make it a little bit, you know, stand up a little bit more just to give it that kind of effect that you're looking for. But, you know, I, you live, you learn. This is the first time I've ever tried anything like this. I would do it I don't want to say completely different, but there's a lot of things that I would change in the way that I did this doing it again, which I will not necessarily this image again, but all in all, I, I will do this again because I think it's a neat idea. I just, you know, it's the first time I'm doing it. So you have to learn, you have to make the mistakes. That's how you learn and how you grow. And I would definitely use the liner paint. For sure, 100%. And if I decided to do something like this again, where I'm actually putting flowers, I think I would do a bigger frame. I think that's where this project failed, is I should have done like an 8 by 10 or even maybe the next size up from that. Because I think that this one, although it turns out, and I think it looks really pretty, I think that it would have been better if I had a bigger frame, more room to work with, and it wouldn't be quite so smushed looking. And I would definitely, definitely change that, the paint that I used on the outside of it. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, So, you don't, you just, you gotta learn, right? You know I mean, like, I'm doing this, I'm showing you guys, and you can say, okay, well... This part, yeah, I like how this turns out. I'm going to pull this piece from it, but I don't like how this turned out. So I think this one would be better if this was done so that when you go to try and do something on your own, you can build off of it and make it better. Like that's what we're here for, to give ideas, to inspire, to show you things that I've learned, to learn off of you guys. And then, you know, you go out and you're like, yeah, now I can do this and I can make it even better. Like this way we're all growing together. So here we are 24 hours later. I'm removing the tape from the paper and the glass so that I can now decide what I'm going to do with the background. 
The colors that I'm going to be using are more kind of folly type colors. It's going to be like this really pretty dark red like sunflower looking um or sunflower looking it is a sunflower but it's like a dark like almost a burgundy color and then some cream colored flowers and some greeneries and stuff like that and i want something a background that's going to complement it i don't want it to be white at all i know that but i want something so i think that copper will look pretty good uh, it's going to be transparent. I don't want it to cover it. Like, I want it to be able to see through. I want it to just be a plain background, but just something that's going to accent and go well with the colors of the flowers that I'm choosing to use. So, copper is what I decided to do, and I'm just putting a little bit in there. Like I said, I, I want the transparency. I just want that hint of color on it. And then very, very carefully, very carefully... I'm going to put the resin on and I mean thin layer of resin very 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 like just barely take it to the edge because I don't want it to spill over it needs to fit back inside this frame I don't necessarily even need it to go all the way to the edge because part of it will be covered by the frame that goes on it and I don't want to make it so thick that you know the frame's not going to fit back on it I just need the color to make sh sure that the color reaches the edges of where the frame is actually going to, you know, where you're seeing the glass. I want to get in all those parts, so I'm just kind of making sure that the resin touches everything and it can start to do its thing. Again, you know, it's it's nothing major, but I don't want it to leak over because I did not prepare this class at all with anything because... I didn't want to. Yes, I was being lazy. I should have. But it's fine. It turns out fine. I didn't have an issue with it because I did take my time. Like, it, this took me quite a long time to do. And that's fine. I mean, I guess in the long run, I probably could have put some glue on the back of it and done that and waited and it would have been okay and faster. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Like... We all do what we do. It works. It didn't, I didn't have any overspill. It's fine. It's great. So the resin that I am using today is the Nick Pro Crystal Clear Finish. And there is a discount code for you guys in the description box below. You can check it out. It's a great resin. If you haven't tried it, consider trying it. I mean, it's fantastic. And I don't get anything from saying that. I just, I really like this resin a lot. Okay, so 24 hours later, it's all cured, and you can see it's not exactly touching the edges. Again, that's fine, but it does give it like a shimmery kind of background, and that's along the lines of what I wanted. So now what I'm doing is I need to come up with a back piece for this because I, you know, the back of the frame is like cardboard, and I don't want to see through that, so my incredibly intelligent self drew on the um backing that was already there so i had to recut out another one giving the glass a good wipe putting down the paper that i cut out the back of it it's all nice and pretty and ready for the flowers so these are the flowers that i'm going to be using i got the sunflower i got from the dollar store the other ones I happened to find on clearance at Walmart for like 75 cents, so I picked them up. I really like that big poofy white flower. I have no idea what flowers are which, so don't ask. I really don't know flowers, except for some flowers because they're my favorite. So all I'm doing is deciding which ones I want to use. The sunflower is the one that I want to pop, so that's the only real color color I'm using in here. I decided that it needed a little greenery, so I cut up one of the leaves. I'm just taking, I think the big ball thingies are called thistle. I'm going to take one of those, and I'm working from the back to the front, just getting some hot glue, placing it on there, and gluing these pieces where I think they look good. Now, I'm no florist by any means, like, not... But I like the way that it turns out. I like the way that it looks. Again, this is where I wish that I had decided to use the bigger frame instead. But I didn't. And it'll be okay. 
I keep telling myself it'll be okay. <laughs> uh -huh. So I'm just taking and putting each little piece on a little bit at a time, kind of trying to figure out and remember how I had it when I had it all together so that it's all going to show. And, you know, like that's, that's it. This is just use your imagination, how you think they look best and go with it. You know, you can do whatever you want. There's so many different things. And then, you know, you've got this cute little flower vase frame thingy. I think it looks pretty. Again, the flowers, <laughs> they do overtake the frame. Like one flower is, or not the frame, the vase. I mean, they overtake the frame too. One flower is bigger than the entire freaking vase, but it's okay. It's okay. A learning experience, right? That's what I keep telling myself. It's a learning experience. But you know, I mean, we all do this stuff. Like, the, it, you know, I'm sure you guys, I'm going to get a lot of, thumbs down for this but it's okay take it run with it do something fantastic i think it looks cute you know is it something that i think is gonna you know sell for a million dollars no of course not but it's something to grow off of right and that's what really matters in the end it's a learning experience and you know something that i can share with you guys and, you know, maybe somebody likes it. And maybe you all hate it. I don't know. But that's pretty much it for this one. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will catch you guys on Monday for the next one. Love ya. Bye.